welcome to this very special bonus episode of the KBB Review Podcast. And in fact, it's the first in a very special series of bonus episodes looking ahead to 2023. I'm your host Andy Davis and in this series we'll be talking to some key business leaders in the KBB sector and asking them where are we now and where are we going in the next 12 months. Where are the opportunities, where are the pitfalls, where's the consumer going and how are they planning for their own companies. First up we have Nathan McLean from Virtual Worlds. It is leading the way in virtual reality solutions for retailers as well as offering hugely successful design packages and Nathan himself has always been a real forward thinker applying very conceptual ideas to create practical applications so it's great to hear what his view of 2023 is. But first... Make sure you don't miss any other episodes in this special series or indeed any of the normal episodes of the KBB Review Podcast by following us in your podcast app. You can find us in Apple Podcasts, Spotify or anywhere else you can get podcasts to be honest. And you can do that by simply searching KBB Review or one word. And while you're there, leave us a very nice rating and review as it really encourages others to give us a listen. Right, joining me now, as promised, we have Nathan McLean from Virtual Worlds. Hello, Nathan. Hello, Andrew. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. You can hear my cold, but I'm struggling on. Proper man flu. That's it. You're a soldier. That's it, right? This is what my wife doesn't understand. <laughs> Let's get stuck in because there's a lot to talk about with Virtual Worlds, as always. Before we look forward to 2023, what is your assessment of 2022 as it draws to a close for both Virtual Worlds and the KBB industry as a whole? What do you think? It's been oh, a challenging time for retail out there, especially with all the news of negativity and the headlines in the news, interest rates and all this kind of thing. But what we're experiencing at Virtual is very much a mixed bag out there. So we've got some retailers that are struggling and others that are amazingly busy. There's quite a contrast between people that are just having it better than they've ever had it before and others that just can't even continue this with some cases. The question that we should be asking there is, can we identify a difference? What, what are these companies doing that's different? And there, I've, I've got some, my own thoughts. Uh, there'll be a whole varied series of circumstances there, but there's one aspect that we're very interested in, in virtual worlds, and it's been what our focus has been on, just giving the retailers a new vision on how to operate and what's important and what's actually happening in their showrooms. So for virtual worlds, I guess we're in an enviable position because if you think about it, when the industry is struggling, that's when companies like ours really come to the forefront. And that's about retailers needing to up their game. And then it's the sales solution that you have. So if you know, retailers that are struggling, this is when they need to look to the future. Are they going to keep doing the same thing or are they going to change this situation and there is a definition for insanity, isn't there? That's keep doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. So Virtual Worlds is here to help people do things differently to reach a different outcome. Such an interesting approach, isn't it? That yes, the market is shifting or changing, but you know you have to shift and change with it. And I think that's always been your philosophy uh, right from the beginning. Let's look forward then. As you rightly say, there's so much uncertainty going on, so much happening. It's all over the news. You can't miss it. So as a business leader in this industry, how do you see 2023 playing out? It's going to play out in the mindset of everyone, isn't it? Because that's your reality is the mindset that you've got and how you interact with the world, the things that you say, <laughs> your attitude with people. So what the industry will be fighting is the negative news that's being broadcast everywhere. But you need to have a success mindset, keep the positivity, share that across the teams. If you're speaking to your customers, again, it's, it's the tone that you put out there. It, it's the vision that you've got for the future. And I'm very big on this, and I don't mean from a, a weird secret sort of concept, but it's just a natural part of life. If you've got a positive outlook, uh, you're better prepared to see opportunity and an open mindset for change because you've got a belief that things can be better. So then the question is, how can it be better? Then you're looking to change, and that's the secret. So the, you know the retailers that are going to do really well in 2023 – are the ones that are currently providing the best customer service. Because when things get tight, that's when businesses really need to compete. And if you're a retailer that just naturally everything was super busy and you were easily getting work just because of supply and demand, then you didn't need to try so hard. But as the marketplace changes now, you're being exposed to the lack 
in customer service and the customers are going to buy where they get the best experience. Yeah, it's so interesting, isn't it? Because I think control the controllables is always a thing that comes out in these situations, isn't it? I mean, you can't do anything about the Bank of England interest rate, but you can control how you deal with that customer on that day. And if you do that as best as you possibly can, you are putting yourself in the best possible position, aren't you? I mean, look, let's get into a bit of detail here because a lot of people listening to this, they're small business owners, they're entrepreneurial retailers. And despite everything that's happening, as we've said, they'll be looking for opportunities. Where do you think they will be in 2023? You've talked a lot about offering customer service but is technology a massive part of that do you think it's not the whole part of it i mean first of all people buy from people right so it's the way that you interact with your customer and that starts off at the very beginning in how you market your business so that first touch point you need to make a fantastic first impression and set the personality of your business Marketing is so important because all that your customer is going to know on that first contact about you is the information that you provide there. And then you're looking at, well, how does your marketing message differ from the thousands of other competitors that you've got out there? And if you can't differentiate, you're wasting your marketing spend, basically. If you're not marketing your business, then... Well, you're going to be great if, if you're purely working from word of mouth and you, you're already giving amazing service and word of mouth referrals is absolutely the best. But when there's time when word of mouth referrals just isn't giving you that pool of opportunity, then you need to reach further afield and market your business. And in marketing your business, speaking to your customer from the point of view, what is going to be important to your customer? And for that, I've always said, you might not recognize it, but we're all selling a very, very valuable commodity and that peace of mind, just that certainty that everything's going to be right. If you could give your customer peace of mind, you've just made your business a very easy decision making. Yes, I'm going ahead with this because you've just removed all the risk and people are risk adverse. Again, this is, this is something that Virtual Worlds is very focused on. This is all through the customer experience. So yeah, I'd say to answer your question, um, the retailers that are self-examining their customer experience, are they up to the mark expected? And compare yourself with other retailers out there because if you're not matching your competitor and there's less people willing to spend money on renovating their home, then you're not going to be in the choosing, are you? So right at the offset, you need to decide what is your future going to be? How confident are you in your business? Are you going to be a winner or a loser? If the answer is I'm going to be a winner, then it's simple. What do you need to change to be there? Um, and put an action plan together. The peace of mind thing is so interesting, especially during a time of financial uncertainty, that peace of mind that this is a lot of money people are spending on a kitchen or a bathroom. They want the peace of mind that their money is going to get spent in the right way by people that they trust. Yeah, you know, these are all things that are absolutely independent retailer 101, aren't they? Yeah, and I will stress at a time when there's so much uncertainty in the world, that is even more powerful and more important to provide that peace of mind because peace of mind is going to stand out so much more, that peace of mind messaging. People want certainty. They want comfort. They want stability. Um, and it's understandable why when we're surrounded by such uncertain times. And what's your sort of gut feeling about how consumers will react? Do you think they will put off big projects until things work themselves out? Or we saw this through the lockdown, didn't we? That's what everyone thought would happen. But actually, the, the complete opposite happened. Um, you couldn't get a skip for loving the money. What's your gut feeling about what might happen? I believe that people are more motivated by their emotional desires than needs. So, you know, you might not need a new bathroom or a new kitchen but the desire to have a better living environment, I think that will win through as long as people do have the means of paying. I mean, if people haven't got any money, then obviously that, that's out of reach. But I, I, I think people are always going to want to improve their lives. And again, where somebody's got control of their life and they can provide themselves a better lifestyle at home, and they have got the funds available, then I think maybe even more now than before, People are looking for that feel-good feeling. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because where you're living in a time when there is such negativity, is it not natural that you want to find a piece of happiness, a piece of, wow, I've done that? 
yeah, I think all these factors come into play. Nesting is always a thing that happens during times of uncertainty, isn't it? And this is why this industry, I think, is actually really robust through these times. It's not... I believe so too, yeah. Yeah, there's nothing frivolous about kitchens or bathrooms. Every home has at least one of each. And when people are... Uh, withdrawing into themselves because because things are going wrong on the outside, they tend to nest on the inside. And we saw that through lockdown, you know, when loads of people were off on furlough, they all did their kitchen and their bathroom up. It's because they wanted to make the environment that they spend most of their time in a really happy one. And I think it's probably more likely to be holidays and those kind of things that suffer. I think you're right. And also because with a holiday, it's a memory which is important, but maybe now people are thinking, invest in my home, increase my equity. It's an investment that's going to pay back in the future compared to an overseas experience. But also, also, you know, bathrooms, kitchens, that they are aging all the time. And again, when things start to go wrong in the room, it's reasonable to suggest that people be thinking, well, look, if I fix this, what's going to go wrong next? And then a logical thought is I might be more beneficial to replace everything and just know it's all sorted. You know, it's like a car. If it keeps on breaking down, breaking down, you're wondering how much money are you going to keep putting into this? It's time for a new car. Same for kitchens and bathrooms. Well, let's talk virtual worlds specifically now. Lots of big changes for you in 2022. Where are you investing and planning to grow in 2023? I mean, you've always got one eye on the future for as long as I've known you. What's your plans for your company in 2023? Well, we love doing things differently, changing the game. And we're looking always at what the pain points are for the end consumer as well as for the retailers and providing solutions for that. So, you know, the here and now is about driving efficiency, um, relieving the stress of the designers. So, for example, with our version 8 release, that is all about always being presentation ready. So that's removing the stress of customer coming in, maybe a last minute change and you haven't got the renders done. So we removed the need to do renders. We're doing real time rendering there. Long term, I'm very interested in this fascinates me. If you think about all the investment of time and thought that goes into creating a design, doesn't matter what platform you're on, but let's keep with virtual worlds. And then, of course, because you're using virtual worlds, you're selling far more products. Most of those projects are going ahead. It just seems such a shame to see that design file end up in the bin. So my thoughts go towards now, how can that design file add value to our retailers that they're able to offer their customer an added benefit of having a virtual world environment. So that's where my my vision is now. And th- there's lots of areas where this will pay forward. So it's very exciting. I, I'm, I'm not want to give too much information, but it's those kinds of thoughts that I have. It's, it's, it's changing the way that things have always been done before. And that has been the whole thing. But if, if we're looking, here's something, and we're doing it now, but how do we communicate to our customers what virtual worlds is doing and, and why we're doing it. I like to look at things on a simplistic level. So if you're a retailer and you've got a showroom, you should be asking yourself, why am I spending all my money on the showroom, my staff, the design software and everything? And I think everyone would agree it's to create the opportunity to have someone walk through the doors. That's stage one, get someone to walk through into your showroom. That's what everything's in place for. And now it's to have the opportunity to convert that customer into a sale. Now, with virtual worlds, I'm saying that, for example, the industry standard conversion rate is 60%. I've been told that many times from lots of different organizations and people. So we're saying to lose 40% of that hard-earned opportunity is absolutely unacceptable. And I believe we're the only company that's saying this. So why are they losing 40%? And my view is it's to do with the customer experience. And then it gets down to what Virtual Worlds is about. It's about that customer experience. I try and explain it in ways that people would make sense to them. You know, we talk about neuroscience of 4D theater, all the principles of that. And I'm not going to get into the neuroscience of it, but here's an example. And this is very interesting. So um, last weekend, I was in a boutique gentleman's clothing store. I got my girlfriend in there with me as well. I'm just needing a pair of jeans. That's it. And I'm seeing these clothes hanging up. And I put these jeans on, and they're very expensive, I've got to say. Not, nothing garish or anything like that, but it just felt good. Nice detailing on there. And I could see it fitted me perfectly. And there was something that I could feel happening inside of me. It wasn't a, a rational decision. It was an emotional decision how these jeans felt. 
And my girlfriend actually started to protest about how much money I'm spending in front of the salesman, but I still pushed ahead with it. Now, Andrew, if you think about clothing stores, I'm sure that you've done your own clothes shopping, right? Yes. (laughs) Have you ever been in a clothing shop that didn't have a fitting room? No. Now, can you ever imagine a clothing shop never having a fitting room? And if they, if there was such a shop, do you think they'd be selling many clothes? No. So now I'm looking at the kitchen and bathroom industry with all the different finishes and textures and everything that's available. It, I think it's fair to say that we are in the fashion industry. So why do retailers expect to be selling a lot of products if they don't have a fitting room where someone can try their bathroom and kitchen on for size? And that's what a 4D theater is. So this is now the way that I'm explaining it. We're introducing the fitting room to the kitchen and bathroom fashion houses where people get to try their room on for size, see how the styles change in front of them and experience that emotional charge that they get when something just feels right. That then goes into the the, the neuroscience about virtual worlds. What we're doing is um, we're, we're talking to the right person. And I'll explain this in a simplistic way as I can. The fitting rooms are people are purchasing with the emotional part of their brain. So that's that's the, the primal brain. The problem that retailers have is that they are talking to the wrong brain. <laughs> so they're, they're talking to a customer where there's lots of questions. Is it going to fit? Am I going to like this finish? Should it be the light work top or the dark work top? Do I have enough space around here? There you are engaging your customer's rational brain. It's cognitive. It's going through all the questions. And in questions, they're seeing risk, risk of making a mistake. Now, this is going to drain them mentally. It is a stress. And the brain doesn't like to burn up energy. It likes to feed your your body with all the calories and everything to grow, grow your body. So what we're doing is that we're tapping into the primal brain, and that's the emotional brain. It works 276,000 times faster than the rational brain. And there's no questions. The brain just knows that this is perfect. And all that the rational brain needs to compute is, can I have this before Christmas? It's It's that simple. And we are seeing such success with this. It's a different way of selling. And, you know, our message to KBB industry is, Take the blinkers off. Just just inquire, is the way that you're doing business the right way to be doing business in the future? How is your business being affected if you're talking to the wrong person? You know, having got them in the showroom, you're talking a wrong language. You're talking to the wrong part of their, their brain. Um, you're overtaxing them. You're stressing them out. Of course, this is the way it's always been because you've never been able to try on your kitchen or bathroom before virtual worlds brought 4D theater. But things have changed and there's a lot of wins to be gained for the retailers if they understand this and they make the buying experience stress-free, risk-free and a pleasurable experience. Well, look, Nathan, thank you so much for your time today. It's always really interesting to talk to you. You're always challenging the industry. You're always highlighting areas that could be better. You're always coming up with the next thing. And I think it's always fantastic to see what you're up to. Again, thank you so much for your, for your time today and an early Happy New Year. Yes, and to you. Thanks very much. Thanks for inviting me on.